Welcome back to the Existential Way, existing news for the end times. My name is Kevin Meredith, and today we're talking about existential enlightenment and the choice to accept God and His will for your life and His will for you to come into your own. To take into action the free will of choice and be empowered. To carry your cross, your very own cross. And with the struggle thereof, to bear one's fruit, to rejoice because of this understanding of the will that of God's will that he has for your life and we're in a time where the false duality is very prevalent and he, and it's being put on display as the truth yet all the while this false light this false oneness of this Duality is not the truth, as we can see. And so, ultimately, I believe wholeheartedly that God's will for your life, as well as, as well as mine, is to no longer look behind and see that the duality of the Hegelian dialectic is no longer the reality of truth the reality of oneness and the reality of the here and now the concept of the space-time continuum is slowly coming to an end for us that have been chosen out and so now we must move forward as chosen ones we must come into our own and really this is the message for today is what is it going to take for you and I to step in to bear our own crosses and to reap the spiritual fruit to not only conquer in love but bear the fruits you know in the labor of love of doing so of allowing ourselves to exist, of taking the choice of free will and carrying the torch of Christ to full fruition for our lives. And so, I hope we're able to get into this place this evening, into the here and now. This is the greatest calling that God would have for your life is no matter where you're at, You know, if you've come to this podcast right now and you're, you've come to this, this realization of the greater need of the person of Christ in your life and you've, your pains taken, pains takingly still holding on to the fence, looking back, one hand left, one hand left to let go and it's the hardest part of the calling is that that final step and I, I believe this is the message for tonight is how do we get started with the things of the being prevalent um, taking upon the need to step into our own each step at a time I, I believe that you can do it. I believe that if the here and now is the most important thing to be saved from this world, to be in full conscious awareness of our souls as tied to the will of the Holy Spirit for our lives and the direction that we now freely choose to abide by in gaining God's wisdom for our lives, that 
the process should come to life for each of us. We should not be looking back. Nonetheless, no more should we be looking ahead beyond the worries for the day, beyond the works that are, you know, that we freely have to choose to labor in. And, and sometimes even I myself forget that the work at, the work at hand is, is enough for the day. The step that needs to be taken, as hard as, hard as it is, and as unfortunately as not often enough taken on my part, I'm coming to this aspect of the process orientation for knowing that the greater need of the process orientation should be the desire for what I want. And it's, it's the hardest step, I know. It's, 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 a hard, it's a hard step, but we must stay positive. We must understand that we know what the goal is. We know what God has done for us. We know what God will do for us. But when is the time going to come where we're going to let go of that fence? We're going to focus our attention on that every next step, one step at a time, one care for the day, one, you know, one day at a time. When is when is the the bearing of our cross going to bring about the bearing of one's fruit? You know, and it's the hardest step. It's the process of stepping not just in the blueprint of existence with ourselves, but truly letting go of our false selves with the intent of external understanding. Maybe even the things that we can never come to understand or even come to know. When to let that go. And when we should come to the understanding or the time of facing the doubt of what we can grasp. Bringing the light of doubt, bringing the light to the doubt that we have about ourselves and truly rediscovering the process orientation of what it is to stand in the here and now, what it is to be here. I myself have successfully failed this attempt many times in my life. Um, it's still a decision that God, I believe, is, is His most wanted and his most declarative command is to step into ourselves to understand how much he loves us in doing so but seeing the process for what it is with no external ambition existing in the here and now with internalized passion for who we are not necessarily not necessarily remaining with what we don't have or what we cannot know or what we cannot acquire but move forward and being able to move forward by moving inward in order that we uncover the, the mystery of what is not seen in the process. How are we to reorient ourselves to who are we to come to be? You know, that's the biggest question, is who are we going to come to be in light of this world which we are forsaken, or which, which we are forsaking? to enter this eternal sanctification and, and it's so painstakingly glorious in God's eyes for us to live out 
this free will in the here and now. It really is. It's something that there is no reward. The process of itself, the light of existence is the reward, is the relationship that God so lovingly waits for us at. He waits for us beyond that fence, but not at a place where there's a secure resting place for our souls. There's, there's no secure resting place for our souls to our flesh, our mortal bodies. But we must let go. We must let go of the externals in order to grasp in so many words what naturally cannot be grasped, the unknown. We need, we need to declare the doubt that we have about what we don't know about ourselves and what we may never get to know about the externals, but that we know that the, the things of the Spirit in God desiring for you to come into fruition of who you are with existence is something that you and I would never want to return from. You know, unfortunately, we're still here. We're still having to bear our cross, yet that cross, each, you know, to each his own, is still pushing us to go, for, go further. It's still pushing us to bear our fruit. And once we, you know, once we are in this fruit-bearing season, that's when you know, we do get stretched, you know, we do get tested, we do get examined, but, you know, we must shoulder the weight of, of God's glory in our lives, and, and each, you know, step that we take further along, you know, our own paths, that narrow road, that, that isolated road, um, the greater is the reward of existing um, closer to His divinity, um, in our lives. It's almost as if the existential or existence itself would never allow us to define in human terms because it's such a sanctified place where one would have to be with it in spirit. So, my message this evening, evening is to encourage you to this place of eternal constancy, the, this place of coming into your own where your spirit is made alive by the invitation of the Holy Spirit. This place where there is no compromise. There is no reluctance to hanging on to the fence. But what does exist is the motivation of the pursuit to stay active, to stay powerful in the Holy Spirit. That's the greatest motivation, is action. With no inward inflection in one's life, that powerful force in our life, the will of God, action of, of existence of this relationship with God, would be dead. It would succumb to mere words to some texts that belong in a book. And the pursuit thereof would die and we, we would sit and wait. You know, because of some externals 
that have been relegated to us, that have been indoctrinated to us. And this is why when, you know, attempting to make light of this encouragement of God's desire for one to come into his or her own, It's absurd to the world, as Kierkegaard said. This is this is absurdity to the world. But to the kingdom, the kingdom that is to come, it is made alive within us. It is already here in the here and now. It is already existent. Its light is shown. It is the phenomenal. It is supernatural. It is misunderstood by any form of hu- human reason or intellect. It is only made alive by one's spiritual witness, one's free will desire to pursue the eternal in this powerfully active nature that God so lovingly wants to provide for our sanctity and our sanctification away from this world that even so many words can fail to describe it because it's not only a positions of a position of one's mindset it's a position of one's heart it's a, it's a position of one's sanctifying stance in this world all the while being not of this world the pursuit of Losing one's life in order to find it. Losing one's life in accordance with all the externals. And finding that the life that we've all always been looking for has been right there with us. Within. The one that the world has all throughout the centuries has been trying has been trying so hard to keep us away from to keep us from this full contact this full attempt of making contact with in order that this world would be exposed Hence, those who seek their lives shall lose them, as the scriptures say. Those who seek the externals outside of oneself shall lose what has been blinded to them within themselves all along. So we who seek, we who seek to lose our lives outside of ourselves find our lives within ourselves and find the true life in the person of Jesus Christ right there with us. So I thank you guys for pondering this bit of existential enlightenment, and I hope you're encouraged to dare to decide today, dare to let go of that fence so you can take the step needed that's needed for today in order that the step for tomorrow can be taken and we can move forward as we move inward. So until the next one, guys, Godspeed. I love you guys. Be it. Be the truth. Change the world. Turn it upside down. Godspeed.